The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. So listen to this great story. And this happened in the year 2000, and I'll tell you why, I'll tell you exactly why it happened in 2000. I was on a plane going to Eretz Yisrael for Sukkot. All of you who have ever had the opportunity to go to Eretz Yisrael know <coughs> Sukkot is the greatest time to be there. And on the plane, I met a man who I knew before. <coughs> His name was Rabbi Shlomo Jacobowitz. Rabbi Shlomo Jacobowitz is the brother of the late Rabbi Dr. Emmanuel Jacobowitz. Rabbi J Shlomo Jacobowitz had a whole network of schools in Toronto called Eitz Chaim, and he had invited me to speak in the schools numerous times, so I, I knew him. We're standing on the plane, and we're talking, and I love to ask this question to great people, especially if there's a great person who has a brother or a sister who's also great, because accidents happen, like we said before. You can have parents that are not so ay 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 and they have great kids. It happens. <laughs> But if they have one child after the other, that's special. Oh, the parents must have done something special. So I said to Rabbi Shlomo Jacobowitz, look, I know you. And I knew your brother. And the other members of your family, they're also special. Tell me about your father or your mother. There must have been something special. What did they do that was special? He thinks for a minute. He says, let me tell you. He says, you know, my father loved mitzvahs. And he loved, he was so enthusiastic, but there was one mitzvah that he loved more than anything else. And that was the mitzvah of sukkah. Now maybe he thought about this because we were traveling to Eretz Yisrael and sukkahs. He said, let me tell you something that happened in 1938. So now, that's 62 years later, right? And that's why I told you it's year 2000. 62 years later, and Shlomo Jacobowitz is still talking about it. He said in 1938, <coughs> Excuse me, we know Sukkot is in October. That was the year where Kristallnacht happened a month later, November 1938. So the SS guards were marching up and down the streets already. And it was very dangerous for Jews to live in Berlin. He said, we lived in Berlin on the third floor of an apartment building. And we had like a little porch from the front looking out onto the street. Now, the porch had to have a wall, a retaining wall. Because chas v'shalom, a kid goes out on that little porch, on the third floor, he could fall. So now the question was, where are we going to build a sukkah? If you build a sukkah on that porch, the SS guards that are marching up and down the street, they'll take a look, they'll see it, blow up the sukkah, take the people, arrest them. What are you going to do? We couldn't have access to the backyard. Listen to this, you won't believe it. He says like this, My father went out to measure the wall. The retaining wall. And he remembered the first Mishnah in Masech the Sukkah. Now the first Mishnah in Masech the Sukkah says something that you have to wonder, why in the world did the Tamir Chachamim teach us this? And they teach us the minimum height of a Sukkah. All of us know Sukkahs are you know, quite tall, right? We all have to fit in there. The minimum height for a Sukkah is 10 hand breaths. Ten tfachim, which is 40 inches high, which is this high. Why? In blazes. Would Chazal teach us? It's like a joke. Who's ever going to make a sukkah that's 40 inches high, except kids when they're playing? But he remembered that. And he measured this wall. And the wall was 42 inches high. So he built a sukkah of 40 inches. And put on top, schach, which was another inch. And now when you looked up from the street, you couldn't see it. Because the wall was 42 inches. And he had a sukkah. And listen to what Rabbi Shlomo Jacobowitz tells me. He said, we did not miss one meal, a whole sukkah. We put pillows on the floor. Me, my brother, myself, we crawled in. We sat on the floor and had every single meal. I'm sorry, we didn't sing smiras. That we didn't do. Right? <laughs> Nobody should hear us. But my father made kiddush. We had a mitzi. We had the meal. We didn't miss one meal. Meal, sukkahs. No, when you have a father who has such a love for a mitzvah, isn't, aren't his children going to be special? <clears throat> Most people didn't build sukkahs in October of 1938. And who could blame them? Who could blame them? It was a sakana, it was a time of danger. But a father goes out of his way to do something like that? What do you think his kids are going to be like? Here's another one. You won't believe this. 
<clears throat> there's a fellow in Brooklyn, New York, a tremendous tzaddik, very, very exuberant person. His name is Rabbi Zevi Trank. Now, what do I mean that he's so exuberant? I mean, he's just flying. He's just so happy to be a year that every mitzvah that he does is with such simcha. And you know what he does? He goes after Musa, every Shabbos, he goes to every shul looking for homeless people. And he brings them to his house. Now he once told me, come to my house, you'll see it on Shabbos. If you have a bris in Brooklyn, come, eat a meal Shabbos by lunch, you'll see all these people. And sure enough, without exaggeration, there must have been 25 homeless people in his house. That's what he picks them up, and they all wait for him. Because they know they're going to get a good warm meal from his <laughs> wife that Shabbos. So I once heard a great story about him, that he once went into a clothing store and um, he asked for a raincoat. So the guy said, what size do you need? He said, I need all sizes. He said, what do you mean? He says, I have a lot of guests on Shabbos. Some are tall, some are fat, some are skinny, some are short. So I need all sizes because I never know who's going to come home with me on Shabbos from davening. And what if it starts raining? You know, they need a raincoat to get home. That sounded ridiculous to me. I couldn't believe this. So I called his wife, I said, Mrs. Trank, tell me the truth. Did your husband really do that? She says, I don't know, but I'll tell you this, we're at a size 42. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think his kids are going to be like? Of course they're going to be tzaddikim. Of course they saw that the father doesn't come home until he makes sure that other people have what to eat and have a raincoat. So that's the example. That's the Avi Mairi. That's the Imi Mairasi. When we have a love a genuine love for mitzvahs. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.